There is a huge difference between this and this. Now, you can hear a difference even out of your shitty phone speakers. But why? As the resident Measurevator audiophile, I feel like it's now my duty to bring forth a new revolution in the world of keyboards. In this case, graphs. My main goal with all of this is more just to quantify all of the words that seem to be describing sound. For example, you know, you've heard it before, thock, the clack, the click, the yada yada yada, all of those terms. There's a lot of different kinds of confusion and I feel now it's time for us to actually quantify what kind of noises these keyboards make. Now I'm at a point where I want to establish what these different terms mean. The most popular used terms, of course, being uh, the thock, the clack, the marble, and of course there is clicky, but let's not go into that right now. So for instance, this is what we would, most people would call a very pleasant sounding board, very marbly, some would call it foamy. I don't think people are going to call this Clacky. And yet, with just a little bit of tweaking on EQ side, I can definitely make this sound like the clackiest keyboard you've ever heard. And just like in the initial sound demo, as you have heard, this is our clackiest, rattliest keyboard that we have. But it is also possible to make it sound somehow good on EQ. So, what exactly is going on? To put it extremely simply, sound is still sound. You can quantify sound very, very easily on a measurement that we call a frequency response. I call it the squiggly lines. And just like with regular headphone measurements and IEM measurements, you too can even see things like, again, the thock and the clack and the marble all on this line. But I guess the big question is how? I mean, okay, let's just make it a little bit fun. Let me just show you some of the very interesting boards that we have at Mecca. Goodbye, Cyberboard. Hello. QK65. Here we have the QK65 with Epsilon switches with a full foam build. And this is what I would consider the marveliest sounding keyboard in Mecca. So, uh, okay, there we go. And here we have what is considered the thockiest keyboard at Mecca. I'm not gonna dispute any of this. This is all according to the staff member's opinion. And of course, you love them or you hate them to the very ends of the earth. Clickies, in this case being the Kale Crystal Jades. So all of these keyboards clearly sound different for a multitude of reasons that we'll go into in future videos and future projects. As I've mentioned, I've given you examples of the thock, the clack, the click, but all of which still has one big question mark around it. How exactly do we quantify all of these things? And here is where graphs come into the equation. Graphs that, you know, you've seen in the headphones world, provided by Moa. Now I'll also be providing graphs, keyboard noise graphs, for the mechanical keyboard community. But I guess some of you may be wondering to yourself right now as well, what exactly do the graphs say? What exactly do the graphs do? And if it's actually a replacement for the sound demos that you, that you just heard. Yes and no. For this part, let me just put on <clears throat> my audiophile glasses. Here's an example of a graph that we're gonna be publishing. It shows the x-axis, y-axis, and then the squiggly line right on top. This is on the Apple Kings on the cyberboards, but more on that later. The main things that you should note on this graph is that the y-axis, the one that goes up and down, is on volume. 
how loud it goes, the higher it is, the, the louder it is. But I think what most newbies would be more confused by is on the x-axis. The x-axis is on frequency. The lower frequency is the one that is more towards the left side is what we consider the bassier frequencies. But the ones that are towards the right side, the higher ones is what we call the, the brighter frequencies. That's at least in audiophile lingo terms. Here's where we dive into a slight conundrum while I would like to import some of my audiophile language into the keyboard community. I know that you guys already kind of have your own lexicon. So I want to do my best to at least try to explain in more sound terms and more objective terms what some of these words may mean. So for instance, what most people consider the THOC is what we have isolated after many trial and error and lots of research to be the 300 to about 1000 hertz region, which means that all else constant, ceteris paribus, increasing or decreasing this region is going to make something sound more or less thocky. Then we have the other term, which is clacky, which is very easily characterized by high frequency volume. The more high frequency noise that you have, the clackier it sounds. And on the flip side, the less high frequency noise you have, the more muted it sounds, or just simply less clacky. And right in the middle, and this is kind of a new term that I'd like to adopt, is what I would consider the tech region. It makes a keyboard sound tacky. This is characterized by a boost or lack thereof in the 1000 to about 3000, maybe 4000 hertz region. This is the region that makes bots sound marbly. But I know some of you may be skeptical, are these graphs as useful as I say they are and if they even are effective at doing all the things that I claim that they can do. The simple proof of all of these working is the fact that I can literally EQ things to sound the way that I want to. For example, I literally just make a super clacky keyboard sound like a very muted dobre. But it does not simply stop at there. For example, I can show you the difference between the Cyberbots with Arco Kings versus the QK65 with an Epsilon foam build. You can see that despite having more or less the same high frequency characteristics, the reason why it sounds so different is because of the boost in the thock and tech regions, as I call them. This is a very subtle difference, of course, when you hear it on a sound demo, some people might even call it sounding more or less the same. But on a graph, you can clearly tell that it's different. And the graph never lies. Sometimes you don't even need some comparison points. For example, with this graph of the box case, you can clearly tell that there's a lot of high frequencies as well as a distinct de-emphasis on the thock region, which is very characteristic of the click sound. In effect, you can just describe the clicky sound as a boost in the clack regions along with a depression in the thock region. Here's a graphical representation of the Aqua King Cyberbot build with the Moyu Black build, which is considered as thocky in Mecha Store. And here you can see another component coming in as well, which is volume. Some builds are just naturally louder than other builds, and this also results in the different perception of the sound itself. And people need to take note as well when, when reading the graph, it's not just to look at each individual region, you need to take everything as a whole. For example, even though there might be a lot of the tack region, you can't really call a build marbly if it has a lot of the clack region as well. So in essence, it's not necessarily boosts in the individual region, but rather the shape of the graph itself that allows you to tell whether or not something is a tack thock or clack or click or whatever. Now, some of you may have noted that the graph kind of starts at 300 hertz. So why don't I include anything lower than that? 
Well, it all has to do with the proximity effect. Because if it wasn't obvious enough, when we're typing on keyboards, we're not like literally up to our ears and typing away. At this distance, we can hear the bass frequencies. Since we're typing at a much more reasonable distance, bass frequencies don't really travel that well. So by the time it hits our ears, we're not really hearing a lot of that low frequency noise. And that in turn is a very good segue on some of the caveats that you need to take note of when it comes to sound demos. A lot of YouTubers that I see use sound demos with the microphone right up close to the keyboard. But the problem with that is the proximity effect. Everything sounds bassier. Everything sounds thockier than it should be. The second caveat is that while sound demos are very intuitive, you just pull out your phone and you can just hear it even off of your phone speakers, the more subtle differences don't really show up as well when we listen to it. And why is this important? It's because when we do a lot of mods on keyboards, for example, foam mods, lubing, changing the stems even, all of this contribute somewhat to the sound individually. But if you're just comparing two different builds with that one thing swapped out, you might not actually hear the difference on a sound demo, which is why the graph would show you the minute differences and it's much easier to see the differences on a much more visual scale. So it's not that graphs are here to replace the sound demos, it's that the graphs are here to supplement the sound demos or at least our sound demos. So if there's two different builds with just one little mod swapped out and you can't hear the difference on sound demos, at least you can see it on a graph. And why is this important? It's because when it comes to modding a keyboard, all of these little differences eventually stack up. And we also want to be able to quantify what mods are actually useful and what is more or less useless. Because that seems to be a problem in the hobby as well. They just dump every single mod onto a keyboard without knowing exactly what each difference is. And here is where my little math-ridden data brain is screaming out to the heavens, oh, I need to quantify all of this shit. All right, with that in mind, I now relinquish my time back to past critical. Please take it away. Uh, anything else? For keyboard graphs, we're going to be using a program that has something called a real-time analyzer, RTA. Of course, that's not just the, the main thing. We'll be using what is known as a peak hole. That is to say, the loudest sound that's recorded across a period of time. If all of this uh, doesn't make sense, again, the, you can kind of trust me on this. So the idea behind this is that we're going to have to record the key presses as close to the source as possible. For example, if you look here, we're going to take this and basically point it right above the, the, the keyboard. We're going to do a set length and we're going to use a spacer for this. Do we have do we have our spacer now? Oh, there we go. <laughs> our spacer is basically a, a key switch remover thing. So we're just going to put the spacer like this and then we're going to space it like that. Obviously, I'm not going to change the spacer right now. But you, you get the point. So after we've established all of this, we're basically just going to start recording the, the key press. So we're just going to start like, you know, tapping it like this, uh, right above the microphone, at which point it'll start picking up the loudest possible sound and recording that as the graph. So that's the very bare basics of recording what I'll consider a keyboard graph. If you want a very simplified explanation, it's just we're going to be recording the loudest sound, right? So this is at that point in time, the loudest sound. So once we've established the way that we're going to record things, then we have to start talking about standardization. Again, the whole point of a database is consistency. So this is the Keychron Q1, AKA the Qcron Q1. This is gonna be our standardized base, our standardized board that we're gonna use for testing of switches as well as keycaps. The whole point of testing is that we have to ensure that all other variables other than the thing that we're actually testing is gonna be con completely constant. So if you're gonna be testing the switches, the only thing that we're gonna be swapping out are going to be the switches. Everything else, the keycaps, the board, and various other mods inside it, it's not going to be touched at all. And same goes with everything else. For example, if we're going to be testing out the keycaps, the switches are going to be the same. The board is going to stay the same. The only thing that's going to change is, of course, the keycaps. And again, same with the boards. If we're going to be testing out what effects a board has, we're going to be switching out only the board. We're going to quantify a lot of different things. For example, we're going to try to quantify what thock is and what clack is. And I think with these two terms, we do have 
a very, very good baseline, as we have mentioned in the whole EQ experiment. But we're still gonna be building up a database and at that point, you'll be able to see all of the, the, the nice squiggly lines that we have. And even, you know, in the future, we might have a graph comparison tool. Who knows? So as I've mentioned, uh, I've been commissioned as basically the high overlord for all things audio when it comes to keyboards for Mecca Store. But really audio is only one part of a very big equation. The other part that a lot of people will be asking us a lot of would be force actuation graphs of which admittedly, I know absolutely nuts about. I mean, I know, I absolutely know how to read a force actuation graph. Don't get me wrong, but actually doing the measurements themselves, I don't know anything. But that's it. We do have another mad genius amongst our ranks and let me introduce you to him right now. Hi. So hi, I'm Lawrence. I'm paid to work at Mecca. Fortunately, I've been educated with learning about graphs, doing force curves, and whatever Krim needs to do. This is a switch, and this is a load cell. So what the load cell does, it's it's able to measure force. If we put the switch on the load cell and we actuate the switch, we will be able to quantify the data that's coming off of it. And how do we ensure that we put in the same amount of force to the switch every single time? And that is why we use a linear actuator. And so we are in the process of building a rig to mount a linear actuator to a silicone finger which would actuate the switch. And from there, we'll be able to get results for both the force and the distance. And with all of that put together, we'll be able to make our own force actuation graphs in-house at Mecca. Let's just have a casual conversation. Here. Sure. Different materials result in different kinds of sound. Yes. Right? The, the usual ones that you always talk about is that it's always the board, mm -hmm. the switches, the keycaps. Mm -hmm, what course. else is there? Come, the floor is all yours. So we have multitudes of things that would change in how the board sounds. First would be foam. So there are multiple different types of foam ranging from poron to PE to sorbethane. We'll be testing all of that and we'll be quantifying it for you. There's also the material in which the board is made. As Krin has showed you, this board is made of acrylic. This board is made of metal and so on and so forth. Brass weights change how the board sounds too. And so we'll be touching on that in a future video. And next would be plate material. So all of you probably already know if you're in the hobby that there are different types of plates. There's PC plate, alu plate, palm plate, so on and so forth. And the plates have flex cuts in them sometimes. So with the plate comes mounting as well. With mounting, it comes so many different types of mountings from gaskets to sandwich to top, bottom mounts, PCB mounts even. And last but not least, the most aesthetic thing in your keyboard, the keycaps. Keycaps come in different profiles. So this is Cherry, there is XDA, SA. All those change the sound as well. Double shot even, different materials. So we will be measuring those as well. And with all that in mind, I believe that is most of the things that we'll be doing in Mecca with relation to graphs. Not something that a lot of people, I hope, are doing in this entire industry. Or at least if you're going to be doing it, we're going to do the best that we can. And we're going to be the best that we can. Oh, by the way, we'll be also be launching a new website, Mecca Wiki or whatever it should be. I don't know. It's, it's Lawrence's deal. With all of this data, we're going to have to host it somewhere alongside a multitude of other kinds of, of information and guides. Again, there's just going to be so many new different kinds of projects that we are currently working on that we're excited to show you. But not quite yet. We're still, again, even this whole thing, even all of these graphs thing, we're still kind of in the beta phases right now. I don't think we're even supposed to be telling you all of this, but uh, <laughs> I guess we still have to make something out of this video, right? Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>just realized that we have hit 5,000 subscribers within two days and I feel like that is an achievement that we should all celebrate so why not just give some extra things like GMMK Pro and some poly carb plates as well as ah, and some some knobs right so just just to celebrate you know just don't tell my bosses about this all right Oi! stop giving away shit